This is Conversations on Careers and Professional Life, a podcast from the Foster School of Business, MBA Career Management Office. I'm your host, Gregory Heller. On each episode, I talk with guests from faculty and staff to students, alumni, and business leaders about the skills and strategies that can help you design a professional career that you're happy with. On this episode, I speak with Angela Shelley, Director of MBA Global Programs at the Foster School of Business Global Business Center, about the ins and outs of their global business study tours. Angela breaks down how these two-week trips offer MBA students a hands-on look at international business environments, from the coffee farms of Costa Rica to villages in India, Israel to Portugal. These sound like fantastic trips, and I'd like to go on one of them myself. We also touch on the prep work before these tours and the real-world impact they can have on students' careers. If you've ever been curious about how travel can enhance a business education or how these experiences might shape future career paths, this is a great conversation. I hope you enjoy this conversation on careers and professional life with Angela Shelley. Angela Shelley, welcome to Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. Thank you, Gregory. Happy to be here. So can we just start with getting an overview of the Global Study Tour program and its objectives and how it fits in with the broader MBA curriculum? Yeah. So study tours at the very base are designed to get students exposed to global business. And the way we do that is by taking students for typically around two weeks to another country or a couple of countries and visit with businesses there, visit with um, local people. We get students into the classic places that you would see and maybe some of the more interesting, lesser known places that you would see when you were traveling to those locations. So we really try to mix culture and business because they're kind of one and the same. Culture informs business and business informs culture in many locations. Those programs are led by foster faculty members. There's typically a, a UW staff member with them as well. They include two pre-departure sessions that are prior to departure. They happen in the quarter before the program leaves, and they are worth two credits of your MBA. So um, the credits are optional. So if you're over your 18 credit limit or you're an evening student and you're not looking to add those two credits to your tuition, you don't have to take it for credit. Some study tours are tied to a class, and I can talk about specifics on those a little bit later. But in general, that's the very basic. That's how it ties to the the MBA curriculum. It also, for full-time students, satisfies the international perspective, one of the international perspective requirements, and then plays into the Global Business Program Certificate, which is a certificate offered by the Global Business Center. And it satisfies one of the experiential learning opportunities as part of that certificate. And then a few of them satisfy the, one of the ESG specializations as well. So I mentioned in my introduction the Costa Rica study tour. Uh, what are some of the other locations that the study tours have traveled to recently? Yeah, so in the last 12 months, the study tours have gone to England, to London with Wendy Guild, and Costa Rica with Charlie in December. And then they went to Israel and the West Bank with Tracy Seslin. And South Africa with Xiao Sung Oh, and Portugal with Andy Haffenbrack. Andy Haffenbrack, a guest who's been on this show before. If a student wants to go to one of those places that's listening to this, are they going to find a study tour to those, or do the locations change every year? The locations do change every year. So you have missed your opportunity to go to one of those locations, at least for the next couple of years. Typically, what I tell students is if you see a location that you're really interested in, just go for it because it probably won't come around again while you're at Foster. The only programs that are exceptions to that are actually two of the programs that I alluded to earlier that are tied to classes. So one of them is the Asian Capital Markets course. That's a finance 579 course during winter quarter, and then it has a spring break study tour attached to it that's optional, and that goes to China and Japan, and that is offered every other year. So it'll be offered in 2024, and again in 2026, Uh, obviously has not happened in 2020 and 2022. And then the only one that happens every year is the Global Consulting India Project, and that program 
is tied to a four credit class that happens during spring quarter. The reason that we offer that every year is because it is working with an organization in India called the Self-Employed Women's Association, so SEVA, and we provide consulting services for that organization. And they are always in need of our assistance, and so we're always happy to provide it, and that's why we go every year. Does that consulting experience extend beyond the trip or does it happen solely when the students are there in country? So the way that it has worked in the past and well, the, this year is the exception. This year it's happening virtually. So students are still consulting for SEVA. They're just doing so from Seattle. But the way that it will happen in 2024 and into the future and the way that it's happened in the past decade is that students go for two weeks. The first week is cultural experience. You go to the the highlights in India, so Taj Mahal and things like that. And then you actually go for a week to Ahmedabad, where Seva is headquartered, and you actually do your scoping in person with your project leads. So you'll meet with an organization or an individual from Seva, and you'll also meet with the women that you'll be supporting or who might be connected to the project that you're working on. And then you come back to Seattle for spring quarter and you actually work on that project. So the short answer to your question is it's both. It happens both in India and in Seattle. You'll do your final presentation from Seattle. Now you mentioned the two pre-departure sessions. Are those essentially like lectures with a faculty member? What do they consist of? So the pre-departure sessions are, just as they're described, they're preparing you to depart. They occur usually on a Saturday morning for around four hours. And the reason that we do that is we try to make it accessible to both both full-time and evening students, and then to try and get all of the content that we can in the shortest amount of time possible so that you're prepared to go, but you're not spending a ton of your time prior to the program leaving, working on program specifics. So during those pre-departure sessions, we will have guest speakers come in. Typically, someone will talk about culture and history of the location that we're going to. So for example, for the Israel program, we had a PhD student come in who is an expert, um, or he he wouldn't say he's an expert. He is interested in the history of Israel and was able to give us some context, because obviously there's a very complex, complicated situation there in that area. So it was really helpful to have that starting point. And then we also have people come in to talk about doing business in the location, especially if the business environment is very different from what we might be used to here in Seattle. We do try to have someone kind of prepare students for what that experience will be like. And then, of course, there are things like what activities we're going to do, health and safety concerns, things like that, the general information that you would want to know before you went on a trip anywhere. So you're creating new programs multiple times a year. What's the cycle time between a faculty member coming to you with an idea for a study tour and that tour being on the calendar? Yeah. So typically it's probably 12 to 18 months from the time that a faculty comes to me to the time that the at least the time that the program is running, if not just the time that it's getting in front of students. So we typically run application cycles in the fall and in the spring. The spring cycle is for December programs and the fall cycle is for March programs. So why it, why the lead up can take so long is first we kind of have to flesh out exactly what the faculty wants to do and what's possible in the short amount of time that we have. And then we need to work with our third party providers who arrange our hotels and transportation and country and a variety of other factors. So I have to send out bids for those, review those bids, select a provider confirm with the faculty that that's who they want to go with, and then get those options in front of students. And then give students at least three months to know what those options are, apply for those app or apply for those programs, and then get selected and know what program they're going on and pay for those costs. So you said the spring application cycle is for the winter trip and the fall application cycle is for the spring trips plural, because there are multiple options. So it sounds like for a first year MBA, the first trips that you would be able to go on would be those spring trips. And that would go for first year evening and first year full time. And that second and third year evening and second year full time students could go on either a fall trip 
or winter trip, I should say, and spring trips. That's correct. All right. I'm sure you've got lots of stories from the trips that you've attended. What's a story that's particularly memorable for you? Yeah. So I'll put these into two categories. So one of them is the real business content, and then maybe the more fun content, but the more unique content, I will say. So for the business content, I'll talk about two experiences that we've had, that I've had personally in the last six months um, on a study tour with students. So the first is the Costa Rica program with Charlie. We worked with an organization that their whole goal is to connect small women-owned coffee farmers to a market to help them be sustainable, to help them make a living by selling their coffee. And so we got to spend an entire day with one of these small coffee farmers. And the students had the opportunity to not only see what that just looks like, but also pick coffee cherries. We discovered very quickly we're very slow compared to the people who do this every day. It's very hard work. It's very hot. You get bit by caterpillars. You get bit by spiders. Um, You have scratches all up and down your arms. You're very sweaty. You're very dirty. We went and actually saw it get processed. So the separating the coffee bean from the coffee cherry and got to see kind of what the roasting process looks like. And all of this is happening um, on about a one acre farm in rural Costa Rica. And then we just got to kind of spend the rest of the day hearing about um, the farmer's story and hearing about their struggles, particularly having that element of how global business really is driven home in a place that we really didn't expect it. And I say that because what we heard from these farmers is that they no longer think they'll be able to be profitable in coming years or they're struggling to be profitable because of the cost of fertilizer that is coming from Ukraine and Russia. And because of that war in Ukraine, the cost of fertilizer has increased so much that they don't feel they can they can be profitable anymore. And so it was one of those moments of you're standing on a hillside in rural Costa Rica and you're hearing about the effects of a war halfway across the world. And that really drove home how global businesses and how you know the world is so interconnected these days that what is happening in one place has huge impacts all around the world that you might not anticipate. So it really changed the way a lot of us thought about where coffee comes from. It made me much more passionate about making sure that people are being paid a fair wage. Uh, it made students come back from that program talk about how their entire idea of sustainability had changed for many reasons. This visit was one of them. There were many parts of that program that really changed the way a lot of us think about sustainability, but definitely made me think more about where my coffee comes from and just being more conscious about where my food comes from in general. So that's one uh, example. Another example I'd love to give is around a MBA alum who is from Israel. And when we were in Israel in March, we went and visited the AI company he owns called BeWise, and BeWise is dedicated to using AI to improve beehive longevity and efficiency. Obviously, colony collapse disorder is something listeners may have heard about. The challenges with entire bee colonies being lost and bees being really important to agriculture in the United States and in many places because they are the number one pollinator and we can move them around to different crops. Yes. So he basically saw this colony collapse right now is around 30% for most agriculturally focused beekeepers. And he was able to use AI and his tool and machine, um, his hive essentially, to reduce that down to 7%, which is just phenomenal and could change agriculture. So students got to see how tech, how their MBA career or how their MBA could have a huge, hugely positive impact on the world and actually solve a problem. So we spent probably two hours there. We had some students with programming background who are really into the programming side of things and got to actually speak to some of the AI programmers and just kind of got to dive into what that looks like and the thought process. And the other benefit of that was we were actually on a kibbutz, which is very unique to Israel. I encourage people to, if you're interested in what a kibbutz is, to look it up. It's a really unique form of living and doing business and combining all of those things into one space. So those are probably the the very business-related sides of things. And then I'll share one more story that's just more about kind of having an experience that you just would not get to have anywhere else in, in your MBA program. So many students who travel with me know that I have a horse background. If you could see me right now, I have multiple horseshoes on my wall. and I knew, I, th- usually- I knew there must be a story about those. <laughs> I've been looking 
looking at them over your shoulder, wondering. Yeah. So many of my students will know that I always bring the biggest one in because it has many connections. You'll have to go on a program with me to hear about why those horseshoes are important to me. But I do try to ride horses whenever I travel. And so I had found a location that I could go riding in Costa Rica. We have a group chat anytime we're on a study tour. And so I put that into the study tour and just said, I'm going to go do this on this free day. I thought maybe one student would go with me. And I had 11 students go with me. It was absolutely magical. The rest of the group got to go watch the World Cup, which was very exciting to watch in Latin America. So we definitely gave people options on what they wanted to do. But it was very much that experience of getting essentially galloping across fields in Costa Rica on horseback with your classmates. That's just you just can't do that anywhere at Foster or on the UW campus. And it was one of the best days that I've ever had on a program. And it was just so much fun to have students share with me something that I really enjoyed. And we all just had a blast. That sounds like an amazing, memorable experience for everybody. So you talked about BeWise, which is an alum who is working abroad in business. Do you have examples of how the experience of going on a study tour has impacted a student's career trajectory? Yeah. So one of my big goals is to get more of these stories. So if you're an alumni listening, please reach out, email me at passport at uw.edu and let me know if you have a story that you want to share and put out there to students. But that's another, I'll, I'll be reaching out if you don't reach out to me. So I don't have a ton of specific stories because I've only been in this job three years and most of the students I've worked with have just graduated. But the reoccurring theme that I do see on programs is a student comes back from a program and says, I want to do more in global business. I want to take one thing that I learned, something about sustainability or something about startups or the mentality of the, you know, the chutzpah that they talk about in, in Israel. I want to bring that back to my company or my team. And that is the thing that I see most often in the short time that I've been managing these programs is a re-inspiration or a new inspiration for bringing global business to their current role or to the role that they're going to be looking for when they graduate. So I've had some students say that their perspective on sustainability changed going to Costa Rica. Costa Rica is really great at thinking about sustainability first in all that they do. And I've seen a lot of students talk about how they're going to kind of shift their thinking in that way, where sustainability isn't something that you add on at the end, but you actually implement it at the very beginning. So it's baked in. And then I did have a student just come back from Israel and reached out to me and said, I, you know, I hadn't really thought about global business and I've been inspired to move in that direction. I actually want to work in global business. So who do I talk to? How do I start having those conversations? And I love getting those questions because then I start thinking about who we can connect them with, where we, might we have networks that we can open up to students and give them some more opportunities. Yeah. So what's a general piece of advice that you give to a student who has that eye-opening moment and wants to get more involved or learn more about global business after a trip or even before a trip? Yeah. So my first recommendation is to sign up or apply for the Global Business Program Certificate. So the certificate has, it's the way to make your MBA global. It basically, I won't say forces, but encourages you to have a more global experience while you're an MBA. You can find more about it on our website. I'm sure there will be links available. We'll put it in the show notes. But what it does is it also gets you on the Canvas page for the GBPC. And uh, I send out exclusive opportunities on that page uh, through the announcements on that page, such as free tickets to a Washington Council on International Trade event or a World Affairs Council discount code. We may also have a Global Business Advisory Board. So the Global Business Center has an advisory board that's made up of a, a lot of really incredible people in the Seattle community. And we'll have a dinner with them every spring quarter. And we'll send out an invitation to GBPC students and say, you have an opportunity to sit down and have dinner with an executive from Boeing or Microsoft or Starbucks or, you know, a variety of, of companies that are, are big names in the Seattle area. And, and you just have the opportunity to, to chat and network with them. So it really gives you access to a lot of opportunities that you might not otherwise have. So for students who want to 
continue exploring global business after one of these trips. Are there programs that you offer throughout the year on the Seattle campus? Yes, we have opportunities available throughout the year for students interested in global business. For example, this weekend we're hosting the Taiwan Business Conference, and we have had webinars that are focused on supply chains. We also have the Global Business Forum is a class that's offered every Monday, every quarter of the year, and that's taught by Christina Fong, and that brings in speakers from all over the world to speak to that quarter's theme. So that's another opportunity that you can do a lot of global business focused things that never have to leave campus. So as we come to the end of our time together, I think I just have one last question, which is what advice would you give to an MBA student who's looking to make the most of the study tour experience? Yeah, I would say be excited about the opportunity to engage with difference. And when I say that, I mean be open to new ideas, be open to new ways of doing business, to different ways of doing business. This is an opportunity to get into spaces that you would never get into as a tourist and take full advantage of that. Ask questions of executives that you might not ever get to ask anyone again about how they do business or why they do business in the way that they do. And then Be open to those answers and take those answers back with you. Take those experiences back with you into the places that you work or the places that you plan to work and continue to have that open mindset as you go through your life, looking for those opportunities to engage with people who see the world differently, who have um, a different perspective, because uh, that is really the greatest benefit of doing these programs is exposure to new ideas, and new ways of engaging in business. I think that sounds like great advice. The curiosity, the learning mindset, the the openness to really make the most of this. What is a unique opportunity to travel and and be exposed to people doing business in, in other countries? There's also a great opportunity to connect more deeply with folks on the trip, isn't there? Yes, I would say that's one of my bigger selling points. Maybe not the biggest selling point, but the bigger selling point is the opportunity to network with people you might otherwise not get to spend any time with and create memories and connections with. Many people in Seattle end up at the same couple of companies, end up working together, and that opportunity to have those networks established on one of these trips went in a really deep way where you're spending a lot of time with people having experiences that you would never get to have on the Foster campus is just something that I think students are surprised by. That's one of their biggest takeaways whenever I read reviews, that frequently that's one of the main themes is that opportunity to get to know others outside of their cohort and how fun it is to get to interact with folks that they might otherwise not get to meet. What's the one piece of advice that you'd give to a student who's preparing to go on a global business center study tour to make the most of that experience? So be excited to engage with difference. Be open to new opportunities. Be open to getting to know people outside of your cohort. That's one of the biggest benefits of these programs is that you are not spending all of your time with your full-time class or your evening class, but you're getting to mix and mingle with people that you otherwise might not get to meet and take advantage of that network as well. That's a network that um, you'll likely all end up working similar in similar locations in Seattle. And that's just some of the friendships that are formed or networks that are formed on study tours. You don't get to gallop horseback across the Costa Rican hillside with your coworkers or your future coworkers every day. So take advantage of those things as well. But just be ready to be open to new ideas and to take what you learn and bring it back to your current team or your future career with kind of new eyes. I think that's a great place to leave it. I'll be sure to put links to the Global Business Center's website in the show notes. The Global Business Center can be found in Foster's new Founders Hall in the center of centers on the fourth floor. So if folks want to drop by and pick up some information about some of the programs, they can find it there. Angela Shelley, thank you so much for having this conversation on careers and professional life. Thank you, Gregory. Thanks for having me. 
I've heard from so many students about the impact a global study tour has had on them. So it was great to hear from Angela about the programs and how they're designed to do just that. A few key takeaways from the conversation. First and foremost, any MBA student who's interested in exploring one of these global business study tours should talk with Angela or another MBA classmate who's gone on them to understand more about them and prepare for their application. The second is that these trips aren't mere junkets. Students engage in rigorous pre-work before they head out and structured programming while they're on the trip that exposes them to new ideas and concepts, business challenges, and the business environments in these other countries and cultures. And last, these trips are an important opportunity to form deep and lasting relationships with other MBAs, as well as faculty and staff at the Foster School that a student might not otherwise have the opportunity to interact with much. For more information about the Global Business Center and its programming, both the study tours and programming that happens on campus, visit foster.uw.edu slash centers slash GBC. And that link will, of course, be in the show notes. Thank you for listening to Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with a friend or classmate. Help others find the show by leaving a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Conversations on Careers and Professional Life is produced by me, Gregory Heller, with support from the Foster School of Business Office of MBA Career Management. Learn more about the show, find show notes and past episodes, and get in touch with me at conversationsoncareers.com. This episode was produced with editing and engineering support from Amelia Nguyen, a student in the Communication Leadership Master's Program at the University of Washington, and made possible in part with funding from Snowcap, a venture capital firm investing in early stage platforms that directly and indirectly solve the climate crisis. Learn more at snowcap.vc. That's S-N-O-C-A-P dot V-C.